All right, hey everybody, and welcome to the 90 Minute Art Challenge. My name is Bobby Chu, I'm your host, and I also have on here my co-host, Masei Seki. And today, our guest of honor is the one and only Lin Chen. Hi, Lin. Hello. All right, perfect. <laughs> and uh, yes, today's awesome little uh, subject here can be found on Tumblr. Okay, the 90 minute art challenge. What is that, you might say? Let me show you. So the 90 minute art challenge, you could go to tumblr.com uh, and look up 90 min art challenge. And here you'll see all the different challenges at, that we have every week, you know, or a couple per week. Uh, this is today's challenge, this beautiful uh, wild dog, um, wild African dog. Uh, and when you're done, you want to just upload it to Instagram, hashtag it, 90 min art challenge. And there we can all see. And every time that we do that, I will also be showing a bunch of my favorites. Uh, these actually, Lynn and, and Masei, you guys haven't seen before, uh, or maybe you have, <laughs> I don't know. But it's always interesting to see the different versions, like even just these two, right? They're both beautifully oh, wow. done. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And so yeah, different. Yeah, like graphic look. Yeah, you're so into the pencil, <laughs> the pencil uh, brush, right? Oh, no? yeah. Like it's, the... it's pretty nice. <laughs> just like laying in like a block of color. Yeah, it's and solid. And it a bit more decisive. Yeah. We Ooh, ha oh. Yeah, we had a challenge uh, last week where it was exchangelings. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of different That's exchangeling right. versions. You know, like a lot of times it's like we want to paint something, we want to draw something, but we don't know what we want to invest our time into doing. Like what's a good idea and things like that, right? And that's why I really like the 90 minute art challenge because I don't need to think about that. I could just kind of do whatever it is that uh, we're painting that day. Yeah, just do a quick study and warm ups. Yeah, yeah. no, it really. I, I think like everyday challenges or like painting studies really helps you to just loosen up. And um, I feel like once you're loosen up, like more more ideas comes up for sure. And mm. if you want to see Lin Chen's ideas, here's a good time <laughs> to go to Instagram. <laughs> go to Lin Chen six six. Okay, and then you can totally just. Follow her there before you forget. Follow her right now. This is a Thank beautiful. You, my pleasure. Uh, you know, big, big admirer of your work. It's so adorable. These Thanks. corgi, uh, this corgi series is just insanely cute. Oh, that was the <laughs> one. The previous one I was talking about. I couldn't fall asleep oh, two mm. in the morning. <laughs> I remember seeing this. That's so. funny. Yeah, we were just talking about and couldn't fall asleep during the a night. So, yep, that's my version of it. Yeah, we also have the Discord uh, community on here, which uh, they are always awake. Talk about segues here today, huh? I'm getting ha, pretty smooth. Great. Pretty good. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so um, Discord community, feel free to jump in here at any time as well. Uh, but just gorgeous. Gorgeous, beautiful stuff. Ah. Wonderful. And just in time, as we started the paintings, we have uh, Masay on the bottom there. You have me to the right of the image. And then, Lynn, you took the hardest angle. You took the corner. <laughs> I like to stay in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> But it is neat, like the different approaches right away, right? Lynn, do you remember um, this initial part? Like, what were you thinking? What was the plan? Any kind of thoughts that you remember? Uh, yeah, I think I was just thinking how to organize my layers because usually I don't paint in one single layer. So I would think about, okay, like, because it's more like a, canvas it doesn't have as many layers as in photoshop i don't want to go crazy so i'm thinking oh maybe i should lay down the background first wow so, so you, you go layer heavy in photoshop <laughs> i do like hundreds of layers 
well, like for for work stuff, like um, even for my personal work, I think there are still tons of layers. Mm, okay. Yeah, because because like I was never a traditional painter, so I'm not that confident. Just put on just. Put down brush strokes, like and 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 just call it. So I was like, okay, if I have layers, I have flexibility. So I'm good with that. Uh, so yeah, I do use a lot of layers. Um, like each shapes I blocked in, it's on a separate layer. So it's easier for me to change colors or like make adjustment later on if quite need or if I just want to change it. But here, I think I took a different. A, approach sort of different but still the sim similar in a similar way so i was thinking i want to have a background on a separate layer and then i could do character the the wild dog on a on, a, on one layer and foreground on a different layer so i think i was just thinking um also like the background where it should be brighter because um because our character, their, our subject, is kind of a darker shape. Um, the value is darker. So we're thinking if um, I wanted to have the character pop, so like where the wild dog is, the background should be slightly brighter, so we have a nice contrast. So um, I was laying down the background, so it's you can see a little bit of a gradient, you know, like a brighter in you know, the like a um, the thirds <laughs> sort of, and the corners are slightly darker so i think that's where i i started um yeah yeah and i, really I, I just like... oh i just uh. want to kind of mention one thing real quick like everything that mm -hmm. lynn was saying everybody it was it wasn't they weren't descriptions right. about like how to copy the thing no, it was I all about all right we got some translation happening. That's that's awesome. Oh, wow. <laughs> global audience, global audience. So that's amazing. Yeah, like everything that you were saying <laughs> is something that a concept artist says. You know, not a realist kind of artist where they see something and they paint that thing exactly, right? And that's the thing I want to kind of mention is that everything that you were saying, I took it as okay, here is the reference, there is the inspiration for my creation, and I will extrapolate certain things from it, but I'm making my own world, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to kind of No, that's a great that. way to put it. That's a great way to put it. Because, like, for me, I was thinking that, but I'm, I, I didn't think of it as, like, okay, this is my design, because it's just in my brain, I guess, that's how I think. But I think it's important to point that out, because I know a lot of us, when we do photo studies or movie studies or uh, paint from life, we just copy what we see exactly. That could be overwhelming, because you're not focusing on what's important. So I think that's that's a good point to, to, to mention. Totally. I start to do something a bit more representational, but... At the same time, my objective here was to not be too closed into the exact color, right? And let the values really um, bring out the representation. Mm -hmm. Masay, what, what were your thoughts about your, you know, about this? I, re I remember at this point, I looked over at Lind, realizing like, oh my gosh, like, you can already feel the the whole like uh, mood in her painting, and you know just by like having that two value difference and the the two colors. Um, <laughs> so I took that from her and started applying it to my own. <laughs> so it was kind of nice having you beside me. Uh, so at this point, I was looking at yours and it's like, oh my god, I can almost feel the grass behind in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Super amazing! I was like, I should do that too. <laughs> Oh, I probably stole from you, and then you probably noticed that. <laughs> I think I was looking at both of your paintings as taking taking some ideas too. So that's mm -hmm. pretty interesting, thinking along on the same uh, uh, from the same reference because you can <laughs> see like how different we're thinking. And I was like, oh, that's brilliant! I'm totally gonna take that idea. It felt <laughs> like so you know, it felt like whether it was ob like on purpose or not, there was some kind of osmosis happening right where you guys were kind of playing yeah. off each other um 
I kind of stayed in my own little corner, so I didn't really see what you guys were doing half the time, which is why mine kind mm. of turned into something a lot different, I guess. It's I think that's neat great. To see. I, I was looking at yours though, Bobby. I, was, I, I remember I was thinking, oh my God, right, there are trees. I forgot the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I do like the fact how you were saying, like, um, when you were talking earlier about, you know, mm -hmm. taking the photo and not really copying it, it's, it's kind of like almost as if like, you're putting it through your, like, you're taking the photo, putting it through a, a filter, like, of your own, oh, yeah. and then creating it into something that, like, That's true. Yeah. And it's nice, because it's like, I feel like you've done a lot of these like paintings so like so many times that it's so natural for you to just like look at a photo take that as an inspiration and like make it into your your own piece yeah i think i i think that's absolutely true and i think like it's it's important for us to learn how to use reference in a way because like i remember like um i've seen some artists take reference and like they use other artwork as reference and then they ended up just like a directly copy. Um, I was just like, no, that's not good. Unless you're doing a, like a painting study, just trying to mimic this artist's paint style. I mean, that's fine. That's a different thing. But sometimes if you're use, just using one photo and just painting from it, and if it's, if you're doing like a creative work, that could be very limited limiting uh limiting uh, I, I couldn't say words right now <laughs> uh, but but my point is if you have a um a good reference and you only take what's important from that reference and also have other reference for different things let's say if you have a beautiful photos of um like a environment you use that photo for um, like the lighting information and then you have some other reference for let's say the character and you could combine those two in uh, in your own way so you're not just copy the uh, the reference but you are um, adding a lot more to it mm -hmm. I think if that makes sense mm -hmm. that totally makes sense now um, we also have the discord community on here lightbox expo discord you can find the link uh, or the address in the bottom of the screen there where it says discord we also have questions if you don't want to ask questions on discord you don't know what discord is you could go to slido.com and you could ask questions there hashtag nighty mac okay um yeah i want to i want to ask one thing though you know we're talking about kind of like looking at something and kind of putting a filter over it and all of a sudden kind of imagining uh, your style. Or I remember I would, when I was heavy into characters, I would see people as characters and things like that, right? <laughs> That's great. Um, is there any kind of subject where you feel like it would be difficult for you to do that? Um, absolutely. I feel like for like bigger environment it's always a bigger struggle i think it's just like the subject you're not so familiar with um definitely takes a, a longer time to figure out how to um, make it stylized or make it of your own um i think for animals for me it's like i can almost i can almost see all the characters and uh, i know what i i know i kind of know like what character it will be and what personality they'll have but for environment for me it's like oh my god it's daunting <laughs> uh it, 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 i definitely uh need a little bit more time to figure out um how you look like um yeah what about what about you bobby like what's the subject you feel like it's less yeah it's um, funny that you ask that um because it kind of segues into something else a little bit but um yeah environments and hard-bodied surfaces oh, oh, the same. yeah Hi. yeah <laughs> and that's cool. why on monday we're having pa pablo carpio join us he's all Ooh. about environments hard, hard body surfaces <clears throat> spaceships things like that he has a course coming out on monday which is a keyframe workout 
So this is fantastic, especially for anybody that wants to strengthen their ability to do yes. uh, that kind of stuff. Like, you can check out his work. It's freaking bonkers. That's amazing. You know, Star Wars, uh, Marvel, you know, he's been part of all those kind of things. Um, dude's like 20-something. Jeez. <gasps> Yeah, it's like 28, 29. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well. So <laughs> good for him. Good for him. That is really Holy awesome. smokes, yeah. right? So good. Yeah, so I that's wish I could a Monday. Like that. You will. You will. We all will. <laughs> Once we could do his course, you know, I'm looking forward to yes. it. Yes. Big time. Yep. Anyways, yeah, how about we, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, um, looking at Pablo's stuff, you can tell that he knows how to, like, take a reference and then, like, put it through a filter and, like, you know, making it his own. Because I, I mean, you can see, like, um, like, parts where you feel like, oh, he probably took it from this inspiration, but there would never be a photo that would exactly, you know, have the exact same type of composition and, the, like, the elements and the lighting, so... I think to to get to that level, you kind of it seems like you have to like really understand how to use reference, and then in order to like make it your own. When you, his, true. I think his thing is like it's a lot more about composition and like um, the types of lenses you'd want to use. Like, is this going to be really <laughs> forced and things like that? Um, because I also know he has a lot of tricks a lot oh. that he kind of goes through and stuff yeah like you know so many people nowadays they use like a combo of like 3d with 2d yeah mm -hmm. and then various various programs you know like half of these things i don't even i'm like okay uh was that <laughs> oxygen or something uh okay what does that do i don't know <laughs> Yeah, I feel that's the trend, like, like for concept art, you can't just, you know, like, 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 there are so many tools you could use to speed up your process. I feel yeah. like, yeah, there's so many things to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, it's, it's, yeah, it's pretty amazing what you can do with, with all the um, new tools, like 3D. Yeah. Pretty daunting. And knowing how to use it well, too. Yeah. Anyhow, shall we uh, ask the Discord people if they have any questions or anything? Uh, you know, feel free to speak up and join the conversation. Takes them a bit. They gotta unmute their mic and stuff. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hey, I actually I have a question for Lin Chen if she doesn't mind. No, um, not at all. yeah, I just, uh, your art is yeah, your art is so distinct, and I feel like so much of your personality comes through in it. But I was just curious, like, who are your artistic influences? Because your art just seems so you. But I'm kind of curious, what kind of inspires you? Oh my god, oh, artist heroes, so many of them. Bobby Chu is one of my artist heroes. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely got um, like for 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 character um, like Bobby's work is always my big inspiration. I remember um, like a long time ago, I was drawing characters, but they are standing there still, you know, not doing anything. There was one time I met Bobby at um, at the convention. I was asking him, "Hey, do you have any suggestions? How can I improve myself?" And Bobby's like, "You know, like he can have more story going on, you know, character." Um, they are just standing still. They could be doing something. I was like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I didn't really think about it too much until years later. I realized, oh my god, that's what Bobby means. You know, like each, um, each, each image. It's, uh, it's like you're telling a story. We're we're drawing. Um, we're doing art. It's basically because we have a story to tell. So if you're char if you're making a character, like if there's some sort of interaction between the characters or even between the character and the audience 
I think it's important to show that. So I think that's a that's a big in, influence I, I got from from Bobby and also uh, like for lighting and color definitely um, Tonko House that's to to me and Robert Kondo there. They're, um, they have a uh, they have a class on, on schoolism. It's really informational, and I learned a lot from them. And I know it's it's there are still so many um, inspirations um, and artist heroes. I can't name them one by one, but I feel like just going on the internet, you know, like when you see your your newsfeed on Instagram, you see all the artists are doing amazing work. That's a big um inspiration for me every day just keep up doing more um practice and better at it yeah i don't know if that answers your question yeah it does thank you sure thank you i didn't know all of that that's so nice that's, so great. <laughs> that's true that's true well you know, for everybody out there that might not know who what schoolism is and uh you know are new to the stream if you go to schoolism.com you can see all of the courses that we have there including my own course i teach on there as well right there but uh there's over 40 courses um and i take them as well you know they're they're fantastic for evolving getting the rust off whatever you need uh, and if you subscribe to a schoolism course if you subscribe to Schoolism, then you don't subscribe to just one course, you subscribe to all of them, right? You get every access to all the Schoolism courses uh, by subscribing um, that are available for subscription. I, I just wanna be <laughs> clear. This one here is not available for subscri subscription as of this uh, stream, but it's gonna be available very, very soon. Uh, the reason is, some people were like, how come this one's not in the subscription? But it's because we need some of the response videos first uh, because people tend to watch the response videos even more than the lessons. I know I did with Tonko Houses. Uh, yeah. That was cool because I got to see all these response videos for uh, my own friends that I knew, right, that took the course before me. That's great. Yeah, and mine are on there too, but it's under a special, like a secret name. It doesn't oh say Bobby Chu. Oh my god, so we you... have to we have to watch <laughs> that. By <laughs> Bobby Chu. Yeah, you it's guys like... could all look yeah. for it and see yeah, if you like find it. Yeah, it's like which styles is like Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tough to tell. Yeah. I took a Tara Whitlatch's class, mm. and I, I remember I was watching all of the videos from other students as well, and just to see like what other people are doing, and also what I can learn from their mistakes, mm. or you know, the feedbacks videos are just so amazing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, anybody else want to ask Lina any questions? Such a wonderful opportunity to have her today. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Hi, my name is Simon. Hi, Simon. I would like to ask you a question for you all, actually. Uh, I was wondering if uh, you, when you just started to work uh, professionally, uh, how was your experience in the sense of uh, you were nervous about the responsibility that you have? Because you see, lately I have my first job in mm -hmm. an animation studio, like as an intro, hey. a couple of a couple of weeks ago and believe me it's been, <laughs> thank you it's been so stressful <laughs> that i have i've been wondering if i choose the, the right thing even i'm very nervous to like to get higher responsibilities in the future wow so what's, was... what's making the stress just from your you yeah. like you're making the stress or are people making you stressed well, actually, it's it's me. It's not a bad uh, like mm. the oh. people. The people are being so nice, but like like the the fact of having that responsibility, it's it's been very scary. So I don't know if you have some <laughs> advice to overcome like, the stress. If you Sounds like story time. Situation. A time where you were stressed and how did you get over it? Relating to you know some sort of art something. Sound good. Yeah. Lynn, you want to go yeah. first? Sure. I think I feel I can definitely relate to that. I remember when I first start my uh, my first full time job, I was definitely nervous. I was 
I think a lot of it just in our head, you know, like if you've got the position, you are good, you are great, trust yourself, you can do great work. But we tend to always put so much pressure on ourselves because it's our first job. We want to impress everyone, you know, like that actually adds a lot more stress. I feel like for me, I think in the end, I, I can only do just like, okay, I'll try do my best work. Um, you know, just, I tend to overwork a little bit, um, just, just at the start, you know, just trying to prove myself a little bit. Um, so that helps me to, uh, get ahead in a, in a little bit, uh, in a way. And then later on, you, you know, like, okay, I know I can do this job. I know, um, it's, it's, it's within your ability to, to, um, to prove what you can do. Um, also, I feel like don't be afraid to ask questions if there's anything that you feel um, you're not quite sure about. Um, I know especially in most of the animation studios, everyone is so nice. Everyone's super happy to share. Um, so if, you, if, if there's something you don't know, you ask questions and people help you, you, that will probably help you feel less pressure as well because you know okay there's always help and i don't have to be the best of myself in order to um do my work i could just be me you know i i I'm, i can i come here to learn i come here to absorb all the knowledge so it's okay to ask questions and it's okay to feel like to say i i don't know what's this about but i'm here to learn i think that will help us to re relax a little bit as well um, what about you, Masse? Do you have any suggestions on this? Um, the whole asking the question part, I find that very important because um, not only are you getting the answers, like the right answers, it's also it also kind of shows your other like coworkers, like oh, he's willing to learn, he's willing to like you know pick things up, and that's kind of like a good um, way to kind of like put yourself out there as well. And um, I think like it's. It's kind of weird to say, but it is good that you are like um, taking the responsibility and kind of feeling a bit stressed about it just because like um, compared to someone who's just like, oh, yeah, I got this job and is like super laid back. It's like they wouldn't put in as much effort as you are because you're like you're taking it very seriously. You want to do a good job. And I think that's like very good. But to, to stress about things is definitely, you know, it won't benefit you to the fullest. Um, and for me, when I started working at the studio, like uh, Imagine in the Studios, I remember being so stressed. Like every night, I'm just like, T tomorrow's the day. I'm going to get fired for something. I don't know I what. I totally relate with Oh, that. my God. Oh my God. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I know I'm not doing anything wrong, but I feel like I'm not doing everything right. <laughs> oh, my God. But, um, what I, That's so crazy. <laughs> but uh, what, what I realize is, like, it, it is all in our head. and like anything when you when you're there for the first time there's a learning curve and things will get better and um and from from a from a like a a project like our project uh point of view when i probably like this was last summer when um i took on that uh live action movie on my own I remember stressing a lot because that was my first time doing a like a live action creature design by myself because usually you know Bobby yeah. and I work together uh but what helped was like I mean you you suggested this but like preparing myself for that project it's like what are they kind of like um looking for and um knowing how to paint that specific subject so when I actually do the designs it's like I kind of know how to tackle it rather than like blindly going into it so um mm -hmm. I guess you know some preparation uh, helps a lot. Um, and also just like thinking, you know, you can do this. Like, like Lynn said, there's a reason why they, they hired you. So, you know, you should, you should take that into account. Wow. That's yeah. And you, you did so great. Uh, it's oh, interesting. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like, yeah, you know, the whole stress thing, it's kind of like fire. You need it to survive, but you got to mm. control it. Yeah. Right? Like It's like a good motivation. Yeah. Yeah, you got to just be able to control the amount. Uh, if you can, it does wonders. 
for me i I used to get really stressed by the way this is going to be so weird because like even as i say it i'm like who is that person i'm talking about that doesn't even <laughs> sound like me anymore because this is like probably 16 17 years ago i want to say um yeah i would sweat oh my god it when i was stressed <laughs> out i would involuntarily sweat one thing that saved my life i don't know what the heck i never experienced it before but when i was really stressed in like kind of like career related situations i gotta pitch a project things like that somehow my body knew to only sweat in the back so my <laughs> front was dry <laughs> I swear it's so weird my forehead everything's dry and i could just feel this sweat accumulate on my back but that saved me because i just didn't turn around and then everybody was good but i do remember the very first big meeting i had was for uh autodesk back in the day uh, when it was called alias wavefront and they're creating a software called uh, sketchbook pro and i was going to do the cover came in i have to do my pitch there's like six six eight people in the room i i seem to remember and they're like okay go tell us your thing and then all of a sudden just like sweat you know and i start <laughs> doing my thing end of the presentation they all are smiling they're, okay great we're gonna do this and then I walk out of the room, I could feel my shirt sticking to my back. So I'm sure they must have, somebody saw this giant sweat stain on the back of my shirt. Yeah. That's so funny. I, I'm just imagining those cartoons, you know, when they have those clothes where it's only on one side and everything is like naked in the back. It's like something so. That's how That's I great. felt. That's how I felt. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I remember like on the way there, this is funny because like on the way there, I was so nervous. I'm sitting on the streetcar and I'm like, I'm closing my eyes. I have my fist in the air and I'm saying, ex like growing louder and louder. I'm saying confidence radiates from me like the endless waves of the ocean. I just kept repeating this and I'm just like so stressed, so nervous. You know, as this like 20, early 20s Bobby, you know, just like, ah, and, and when I opened my eyes, every, the streetcar was packed, but nobody's sitting beside me. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. That's crazy. I feel, yeah, I, I, I think we should try that, you know, like this. I think sometimes we do need to encourage ourselves quite a bit, mm -hmm. just because, like, yeah. I remember before doing any presentation or workshop, I was so nervous. I just feel like I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I here? But you know, you just try your best. Just be there. Just try to be your best, and you're mm -hmm. good. <laughs> it's a lot of times we underestimate ourselves. Uh, but, you know, like, once you push yourself up there, you know, you're doing your job, you, yeah, you'll be good, I think. Mm -hmm. Actually, a thing that helped me now that I think about it is, like, think about a time where you are very kind of natural, right? And you are doing your thing and you're being entertaining or whatever. It might be with certain friends. It might be in certain places. For me, it was in the basement of my parents' home. That's where I'd hang out with my friends and we have a little shitty TV there and a shitty couch and, you know, and just make jokes and play video games. So I would, I would start to picture that and that helps, you know, and the other thing that helps is kind of like picturing whatever you're nervous about and going through the process over and over, because once you go over it the 10th time, a lot of those nerves go away. And then you do it for real, and the nerves are gone, mm -hmm. hopefully. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I had a yeah. question for Lynn. Yeah, I really yes. appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Thank, I'm, I'm glad to hear that and now see you all enjoying what you're doing again. 
<laughs> you don't see my Things back that though. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just all like. <laughs> I'm sorry. Somebody had a question for Lynn. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, before we go to the next question, um, Lynn, I think your microphone is rubbing against your hair, oh, so it's okay. a bit of noise. Yeah, sorry, sorry about, about that. that. Oh, good one. Go ahead. Go ahead, Iris. Okay. And great stories, guys. I loved it. Um, I wanted to ask Lynn, what's uh, mm -hmm. what's something that's inspiring her most recently? And what's something that she remembers used to inspire her, like like an oldest memory of an inspiration? Oh, wow. Oh, like most uh, recent and most uh, ancient. <laughs> Thanks. Most recently, I feel I've been, um, I've been on Instagram a lot, and I see my newsfeed. There are a lot of Cordy <laughs> videos and animal videos, and I think I definitely took a lot inspiration from them and um some um also uh photographers um on instagram like they see a beautiful image um i just feel like oh my god i see this image i feel so relaxed i want to paint that so that's uh one of my inspiration as well uh for like old and older inspiration i don't know like memories from childhood definitely because i feel like when we when we're painting it's uh, it, it's like you see one artist doing that like cool environment painting it's awesome but like for us individually i feel like when we're making our own art it's important to find subject that speaks to you um i feel like if if i'm more interested in cute animals i want to do more of that so i tend to um look for more inspirations um in that range but also like if you feel um, there's certain things you like um, that speaks to you more, so uh, that'll be your inspiration too. Um, I feel for me personally, just like yeah, memories from childhood because I've been away from home for so long. I, I miss my I miss my hometown. Sometimes I will try to um, like there are some small small story moments I want to tell, um, so I I try to um, uh, try to like like repainted on um, um, like on um, on paper i mean just just put it out there like my ideas so i think yeah those are my inspirations i don't know if that answers the question yeah thank you what about you missy what's uh what's your latest kind of thing that's been inspiring you that you can remember mm. I think photos for sure, like photos that like make me feel something. I'm just like, oh, I want to do the same for other people. <laughs> mm. So Instagram is like a pretty good place. Definitely um, a dangerous place to be because then you can get, you know, go down this <laughs> rabbit hole. Same yeah. as Pinterest, but um, yep. like endless resources of inspiration, but also can be a very, you know, slippery slope. Pinterest, oh my god. Yeah, just <laughs> That's like the ultimate rabbit hole, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. What yeah, about just... you, Bobby? What's uh, your... Yeah, lately it's been... It's been... Uh... Here, I'll put it on. Here's some really awesome Instagram accounts ah. that you should check out. Black Gold Sun, oh my goodness. Her work is freaking just like what's going on there? Like I don't even understand how what's the thinking behind there, but I'm I'm very interested, you know. It's so cool. Um another one. Zach Retz. Mm. Oh my god. Yeah. Right. I love his recent stuff. Yeah. So cool. So cool. So, oh, I love that one look at all like look at these last three you know what i mean it's like so <laughs> vastly different and so vastly cool um <clears throat> and cory loftus he is ah, just yeah. beyond insane of course but i really like how he's been putting these um process videos right here we go like he starts doing this process i won't keep it going because it's going to kill my stream but 
those are three really great ones. And then, um, shoot, there was a whole couture video I sent you, Masse, which like blew mm-hmm. my mind. What was that again? I the forget. The Dior. Um, oh, yes. It was the, it was the 20, summer 2021 collection. It's gorgeous. The Dior, f- yeah. The storytelling. Yeah, colors, the lighting. But, yeah. It was next level. I'll, uh, I'll share it in the... Hmm, I'm looking YouTube. it up right now. I'll try to look it up too. Autumn, yeah, winter, search- 2021, right? Or spring, spring, summer, twenty twenty one. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Dior. Did I give Dior you the? Ones. I thought I gave you the winter one, but. Uh no, I got the summer one, but I will go check out the winter one. Here, here's what it looks like, everybody. Like it's so cool. These images. Very inspirational. Look at this one. It's like a mm-hmm. snail, a giant snail. So cool. Yeah. Anyhow, there's always inspiration. Yeah. Every week, there's like different inspiration, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I want to mention the um, the reference account I was looking at on Instagram. There's one account called Ross 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 Star White Shepherd R A S T A White Shepherd. Um, it's a German Shepherd. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Um, by the photographer Michael, I think that's her name. Um, in the wow, uh, <laughs> I know the photos are just oh gorgeous. Oh my gosh! Yeah, and oh, you can, wow. you can see, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, under the profile, you can see uh, the photographer's other um, account as well. Uh, I, I think she lives in I don't know like. Finland somewhere. It's just so gorgeous seeing um, the snow and everything wow. and the big dog having fun, you know, and her photo is just amazing. Wow. Makes me want to be there. And sometimes I try to paint the feeling, you know, just being in the snow. Holy smokes. Oh, these are fun. Wow. That's fantastic. Follow. <laughs> Anybody else want to join in and in the conversation? I have to. Sure. Oh, sorry. There's another person you can call for. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. uh Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. I always wanted to ask a question, but never dare to. So, uh, hi everyone. Hi. 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 My name is uh, Serene. I'm from Algeria. Hi, Serena. Yes, I often ask questions in the Slido, but never hear on voice. So, yeah. Good to hear your voice. All right. So my question might seem a little boring, but um, it's... um, uh, Have you guys ever had any doubts about uh, pursuing an art career? Or have you ever had a time where where you... um, where you lost your passion for drawing, like an extended art block, or maybe questioned your uh, career choice and uh, considered something else. Because as we know, it's not a very popular um, uh, career path or very encouraged by our our family or friends because it's expensive, but uh, we aren't guaranteed a stable salary and things like that. So um, yeah, have you guys ever had any doubts about uh, pursuing art? Um, I think, I guess I'll go first. Um, I think for me, not so much, sometimes for sure. Um, But I think I'm lucky enough because my family does support me. very much. My parents, they don't really know what I'm doing, but they just have their support. <laughs> just like, no, what to do? We support you. I think it's important, um, like whenever you have doubts, you know, you want to speak to um, that, like friends of yours who share the same interest. It's like, I know for some parents, they have doubts about like kids going into art because when you think of artists, it's like, 
I don't know, like artists, maybe just do big paintings and maybe they will think artist painting doesn't sell and you will be suffering. And But you know, like as artists, especially nowadays as digital artists, there's so many opportunities out there. I feel no matter what you do, being an artist or being in some other careers, once you put your full, like your whole heart and 100% efforts in there, you will get somewhere. I think that's really up to us to, to determine like if our career will be successful or not. Um, for artist blog, for sure. I remember um, I was uh, working at a, my full-time job for a while. When I was first started, I, yeah, I worked super hard. Like I work overtime trying to prove myself and I was doing great at work. Um, but after a year or two, I realized I couldn't draw anything for myself. Like whenever I tried to do some personal work, it just looks horrible. And I feel like I'm not um, improving much at work anymore because like, you know, after a while you're doing repetitive work. And for my personal work, I couldn't do anything. I just feel like I can't do anything at all. And then I remember I was talking to one of my friends, Tian. Um, uh, she's another, she's a really great artist as well. I was talking with her. She was like, you love drawing dogs. When, why don't you just do more of that? I was like, yeah, I could do that. There's no pressure. So my approach or my solution for artist block is actually just lay back like fall back on your familiar subject get comfortable um uh try to feel like the uh, very first feeling like you know if you love drawing when you were little you were just doodling for yourself you know like that kind of fun just like hey, i'm just doodling I'm just having fun that kind of feeling um like it, those feelings actually get lost when we took art as a career. You know, sometimes uh, we're just, a lot of times we're just making art for our clients for or for school assignments, not really for you. So try to remember the fun of making art. I think that helps me a lot. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Say, doubts, stop drawing, artist block. <laughs> uh, Doubts, I feel like I had less doubt because I was, I was very fortunate enough for, you know, to be um, working under, you know, Bobby, like you and Kay there on the side to kind of just like encourage me and just, I think just seeing um, the amazing artwork that you guys come out with made me realize like, oh, this is something that like is, um, you can reach and get. Um, so I guess, yeah, I, I was very lucky in that sense. Um, artist block, I, for me, I like doing other things on the side uh, when I feel like I don't really know what to do. So it's like rock climbing or in the past, it was like um, playing ultimate frisbee with friends. Um, Fun. Yeah, so because like once I kind of like fall back to that and do those things, then eventually I'll this is me personally but eventually I want to go back to art and do uh, you know certain things so maybe yeah maybe find a different thing to kind of put your focus on which could then you know inspire you to do um, other art related stuff I remember being in animation school at Sheridan College and sitting there and thinking is it possible to you know paint something realistic that is fictional and I was like I, I'm, I don't know you know I, I totally had doubts there uh, which is funny to kind of say now because that's what generally I do all the time um, yeah so one thing it's all possible it's definitely all mm -hmm. possible we might not get to tippity 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 top like we can't all be prints but we can all be like that hard-working musician that does well or yeah i don't know where this mm -hmm. metaphor is going but you know what i mean um yeah stop drawing i've definitely stopped drawing uh in my life a bunch of times uh, especially when i didn't know that i was going to be an artist i just did art kind of like because i don't know something just gravitated me towards doing art 
all the time until I was like 21 where I was like, yeah, you know, I think I want to be an artist as a career. So that was, to me, that was kind of late compared, compared to like when I w first started to really get into art. At that time, I still didn't, I totally doubted myself. Um, and then many times after, I've doubted myself too. Because I go for lofty goals. I get excited and I'm like, I want to change the world or something, you know? And, and then I'm like, oh shit, what did I just uh, start? Um, what did I just get on? Uh, what ride did I just get on? You know, but then... You are changing the world in a way, though. You are. Oh, shucks. Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> thanks to people like you that help to support the things I want to do, it really is like the network of friends that have grown throughout the years. But yeah, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say on that, I learned that you don't actually have to believe in yourself. It's great if you can. But if you can't, that shouldn't stop you either. What you should do is think about what would you do next? How would you live your life if you did believe in yourself? And just do those actions. What's the next step after that? If I did believe in myself, okay, I'll do that too. You know, and that's what I just kept doing. Because some of these things, it was like very daunting and very scary and a lot of times that, that fear overwhelms us and convinces us that it's not possible, right? So we've got to really question, is that fear driving our doubt or is that logic? If it's logic, I get off the bus, you know, I'm, I'm not going to pursue whatever. But if it's fear, it's almost like, okay, well, you have to, you have to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. I feel for me, like sometimes just not think too much to it. Like if there's a challenge, my first reaction is just say yes. Like, you know, <laughs> just go for it. And when it, gets to, when it gets there, you know, oh my God, this is so hard. But I already said, yes, I have to do it. So you just push yourself and just throw yourself out there, you know. You oh my good. God, me too. That's I have funny. that habit. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Sometimes it's like, like, why did I do this to me, to myself? Yeah. But it's <laughs> before your mind can think, just like throw yourself yeah. in there. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to watch it because like, you know, I get excited about stuff. I know that about myself. And now other people want me to get excited about their stuff. You know, like help me with this mm -hmm. and, you know, come do this with me. And they all sound exciting. So I got to <laughs> really like calm myself and go, okay, let me think about this. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's also a hard lesson to learn how to say no. Um, yes. Because it's, it's dangerous saying yes to everything. And then yeah. later on, you realize you, you can't sleep because there's no time to sleep. You got too much yeah. to do. Don't burn yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, a, it's a balanced thing. There is like this point that where like in the beginning, it's kind of like you always want to say yes, right? Because you don't have that much demand anyways, and you want to get every opportunity you can. And yeah. then there's like that point where it's like, okay, you got to learn how to say no, <laughs> or, or else you're not going to do anything to the, to your potential. Absolutely yeah. true. That's true. Hey, I don't want to ignore um, Slido. I just remembered we got a bunch of Slido questions. So can we go into one of those? Um, yeah, let's do it. Laffy asks, I'm a self-taught artist. Can you give me some piece of advice to enter in the animation industry? Hmm. I would say for me, um, the way I got into animation industry or get to know all my friends in animation industry is to go to conference. Mm -hmm. um, like, especially right now, I'm like conference moved online. It's much easier for everyone, no matter where you are in the world to be part, to be part of it. You know, like um, last year, wait, not last year. Yeah, last year, like Lightbox moved online. Like everyone is in Discord and you could just directly chat with your art 
the artists you love, you know, like I remember we're drawing together um, on Magman and, uh, and also like we're chatting on Discord, like it's literally people all over the world. It's, it's really amazing experience. So I feel like uh, it's a good way to talk to the artist or connect with the artist that you like and also um, ask questions, learn from their experience working in the animation industry. I, I think that's a good way to start. And also know like um, what are expected um, for you to uh, work at an animation studio. That, that's important to me as well. Mm-hmm. And one of the huge... Um objectives with the lightbox expo discord is to create community you know is to create a network of friends and to build your network of other artists that you know and hang out with and stuff like that because like i think about how i got to where i am it's definitely not because i'm good at art and that's it you know it's because i just naturally i just love talking with people i love meeting people and stuff like that and ended up just talking with all of my favorite artists pretty much to the point where we're traveling together hang out becoming friends and in the beginning we were only at a certain level but we all stuck it out right and we stuck together and then eventually we start to help each other right because we can And that's exactly what's going to happen with the Lightbox Expo community is that everybody, we're constantly, constantly practicing, getting better, encouraging each other. Before you know it, this is only like the first year of the Discord, Lightbox Expo Discord. Wait until we get into our fourth year, fifth year. Many of the people that are starting now that aren't that good, they will become amazing. Not just good, but amazing and eventually become art directors, production production designers, you know, studio owners, all sorts of stuff. Mm-hmm. Time does so much. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else want to join in on the conversation here? Yeah, hi everyone. Sure. Why don't we go to the question and then we'll go to the hi, everyone. Right after. All right. No problem. All right. Thank you. Um, I have a question regarding uh, style and feeling happy with your own style. Um, since I started, you know, just experiencing art, I tried a lot of stuff. Like from oil paintings to like comics and, you know, ink and everything. And it's a cool feeling and it's... And it's part of developing your style and your way, the way that you do art. But I, I feel like sometimes I'm not like, uh, what's, what's the word? I'm not getting per se to the point that I wish that I was. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm not like developing the, the, the style that I wish I had. So my question is, how did you guys like reach the style that you have? And like, what tools did you use? Uh, you know, what, what, what was that development that you experienced through your artistic life? Bobby, you want to go first? <laughs> sure. I was actually thinking about the squirrel that I befriended outside, outside my place. Uh, <laughs> living in this little box, I saw the squirrel and I started to try to feed it. Every time I looked for it, it wouldn't come. But when I left the peanuts out there, And when it came, I wouldn't face it. I wouldn't look like I'm looking for it. I just kind of just hang out there. I do my thing. And eventually, it comes to me. Oh my God, that's such a great metaphor. Right? And that's kind (laughs) of like your style too. When I remember searching for my style, drawing the same damn character over and over again. Ah, the arm isn't right yet. Let me re-erase that. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. 20 times. Ugh doesn't look good nothing gelled it wasn't until I started to just look for knowledge and just focused on that oh my gosh the style and the styles came in droves you know because all of a sudden you have so many more 
kind of books of knowledge in your mental library there that you can pull off the shelf to help you, right? It's like uh, if you don't have any of, any of that kind of core knowledge yet, then you don't have as many options. Therefore, your style is extremely limited. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. Um, I think for me, um, when I started learning how to paint uh, through Dyson Roberts um, painting course, the, the, Tonko, the Tonkoha Schoolism course, that kind of changed everything for me because um, at that point I was learning just like, I was trying to gain knowledge on like how light works, how shadow works, how like just, you know, color and all that. And once I was able to really absorb that, it's like, just having that, I could see like um, my stuff. I feel like I feel more confident in the things that I just learned, and then like applying that to my own personal stuff. It's just like it. It just like changed everything. So um, I I do agree with Bobby with like the searching for knowledge and just trying to gain that into your like your pocket. It it adds, and you can like manipulate style even. Like a lot easier. Sure. Like yeah. I, I, or sorry, I, I was just gonna say like I, w I wonder mm -hmm. when you're developing your style, Masse. Like, let's go back like a year and a half ago, that kind of thing. Uh, were you stressed? Were you ever stressed about creating your own identity, your own style, like what mm. this person is saying, kind of thing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it happens yeah. to all of us. Right? Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Lynn? Did you ever stress before you found your love of corgi art? Yeah, absolutely. I feel I've definitely been through that. But I, yeah, I can't agree more with what you just said. Like, I think the styles comes to you. Once you stop searching, it actually finds you. Um, what, what's important is to focus on what you want to learn, what you are most interested in. I feel like it's great that you are uh, trying different things different media no like um trying you know uh just doing different things and trying to find your your style i think it's great to try different things and see if you like it or not um and then also don't forget like um search out research what that what interested what's interesting what's what you interested most <laughs> I don't know if I'm making myself clear. I think, like, for me, uh, I know, like, I, I want to do cute animals, so I'm definitely um, looking into a lot more reference like that. I think your art, before you find your, your style, whatever that means, it has to, the subject has to speak to you, because um, whatever, no matter what you draw, um, like, people can tell if you have a true passion for, for it or not. If you're just doing a study, you're forcing yourself to 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 mimic the style that the other artist does. Like people can tell if you are confident at it or not. Um, I think we all have different experience from our past, and we also have um, different preference for like who like uh, what other artists we are admire. So I think those combination like your different your unique past your unique life experience um, combined with um, the inspirations you took from the artists you love. Um, and I think those combination kind of um, goes together to contribute your, to your own art style. But in order to get that, you have to do a lot of practice because um, that's the only way for you to get more confident on what you are doing, what you're creating, and eventually start telling stories about it. I think it, um, the, you will get a sense of, okay, I got my own style. Once you realize you are creating an image in order to um, express an idea or tell a story instead of just focusing on the technique um, side of things. Um, I think that's my experience of finding your own style. And let me just ask you and dive a little deeper into that, uh, what you were just saying, Lynn. So sure. when you're looking for reference that you gravitate towards, again, mm -hmm. you're, you're not really just looking at the reference as is, right? You're like you're looking at the reference and going, okay, how does this inspire me for my own creation? 
some sort of mm-hmm. idea that is, you know, splintered off of this uh, reference that I'm looking at. Yeah, I think absolutely. Because we're again, again, we're not just copying the photo, copying our reference. I think it's important to. It's like it's very personal, you know. Making art is personal. If you、um, if you feel this reference speaks to you, it gives you a certain kind of feeling. I think it's more important about capture that feeling that that、um, that's that reference has and kind of re- recreate it in your own image. I think that's that's most important to me.、Um, the way I use reference is to just mimic that. Definitely, you know, if it's like a warm sunshine, I wanna really capture the warmth of the sunshine, sunlight. So,、um, like, if you just directly copy a photo, you probably color drop it. You know, just like, okay, this is the color that's on the photo. But when you do it that way, it never looks as good because,、um, yeah, our creation. It's your your you apply your own filter to to your. Um, to your reference, so it's like, how can you exaggerate this feeling? How can you exaggerate the kind of、um, lighting you are seeing?、Um, so that requires a lot of fundamental knowledge, which is important to to、uh, to to have a very. It's very important to have a solid foundation. So, like, for example, you know how the lighting works. You know the sky is blue. That's why the shadow kind of reflect the sky's color. And then when you see the reference image, you know, oh, the sky is kind of purplish, and the shadow is purplish too. I'm just gonna exaggerate that. So I think that's the way you kind of,、um, yeah, you 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 use your reference and to have your own artistic take on it. That's so key, what you just said there, because everybody could probably remember. A person in school or something like that, where they could copy really, really well, but ask them to design a character or do something out of their heads, and they are lost. Right, and it's、mm-hmm. because all that hard work was put into being able to copy angles, copy tones, copy whatever, without thinking about it from a creator standpoint. Of like, okay, that color is that. Why is it that? Okay, so if in my world it's going to be like this, but turned up like twenty percent, what color would I use? You know, like these kinds of questions is what's going to lead to becoming a creator of things rather than a copier of things.、Mm, absolutely. I, I have a question around.、Uh, I don't know if it's around that, but、uh, hi, Lynn. Hi. <laughs>、uh, it's、uh, is is it okay that I ask a question? Of course.、Sure. Okay, you're the boss、uh, of the you... Discord. You know, you're, you're... <laughs> Discord queen. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm a huge fan, uh, Lynn. Um, I'm Patricia from the、yeah. Netherlands. Um, hi. Hi.、Uh, I have a question about simplification. Uh, because uh, I like yeah,、uh, uh, training my eye, you know, with reference and、um, mm-hmm. getting that information. But how to sim how to simplify?、Uh, that's something I still.、Um, I'm struggling with, and I wanted to ask what helped you for、uh, training that muscle、uh, for simplifying a subject or a creature, or yeah. <laughs> That's such a good question. I feel like to simplify it, you kind of have to go complicate first. I don't know if that makes sense. I think you have to like do realistic studies, like like. We have an animal. We need to understand the anatomy of the animal. So we are not simplified at the at first. We're not trying to simplify it at first because you need、okay. your time to understand、like、how、everything. the bone structure is re- put together,、um, This- how the muscles are wrapped around.、Um, after you know that, I think what helps me is to simplify, but from inside. And then out, by which I mean, it's like you know the bone,、uh, the structure, like like the skeleton, and you simplify the skeleton first.、Um, let's say if,、um, like if if you want to do a cool gesture of of that animal, it's in it's really hard for you to just draw it out、um, all at once. But if you know how the skeleton 
like the spine is positioned, I think that helps me to think it like I draw the skeleton first and then the line that represent the uh, like the four limbs. And it kind of helps me to think how the gesture or the position uh, the animal is in. And then I add the um, like the forms like um, to the animal. I, I don't know if that makes sense. So I think it's important for us to learn um, what's going on inside of a subject and then simplify it uh, from there. Because once you when you simplify it, the, the character, you are not just create a cartoon version of it. It has to make sense. Like if it's a um, stylized character for animation, it needs to move correctly. It needs to be able to, you know, um, let's say if it needed, you could be put in 3D and add skeleton um, to it in order to animate. So I think in order to simplify things, um, just to try to understand how, how, um, how your subject moves and then um yeah i don't know like for example here what we're doing i think uh for the wild dog i know i want to exaggerate his ears um i know the face structure sort of i want to emphasize on the cuteness of the ears so i kind of exaggerated that a little bit too um so i i don't know it's too it's too um approach i think is two steps i would say first is like understand your your subject and then simplify from it's a, the thing i don't know if that makes sense yes. that, <laughs> i tried to explain myself better no, but. thank you it's kind of like what we were just talking about is like know the knowledge first and then you can like start you know taking things and stripping things away it's like that yeah. live action film that you were talking about earlier missy that you that you know I abandoned you <laughs> and you had to tackle yourself. Uh, you know, you, you started to paint things that were related to that subject matter, just doing a whole bunch mm -hmm. of studies for like, what, one, two days or something? Yeah. Yeah, and then just fill up your head with all of this knowledge re regarding that thing, right? And just like what Lynn yeah. was saying, go slow at first to be able to do mm -hmm. a simplified and perhaps even go fast, right? Go slow at first to understand to go fast uh, mm. that's something as well mm -hmm. i want to show an example of one other thing that i think is very important for simplifying a design this is talking uh, i think this is something that i really started to understand afterwards so i feel like this is a more advanced kind of part that we can all kind of think about later on so here's a subject by the way, this is um, this is a digital this is a painting drawing animals course that I'm working on where it's all about sketching and sketch language, how to simplify. So that was a really great timing for that question, Patricia. So we have this little monkey drinking out of a dish, right? We can draw this monkey drinking out of the dish, or it's always awesome if you can think about something that the subject is related to where it totally makes sense to you but it's kind of abstract to get there so for example when I saw this what I thought about was a clam right where mm -hmm. like this leg this you know these legs here is kind of like holding up the clam holding it open right and if I kind of go okay yeah there's the monkey's head mm -hmm. and then the body and then those are the arms it helps me to sketch this out in a way where I am really drawing it all together the body with the dish right because I'm thinking about it as a whole entire object as a clam if that makes sense mm -hmm. um, and then one other example that I'm sure so many of us love right thinking about it in this abstract way to design the character, right? Hiss from uh, Robin Hood. So good. I love that example. It was so genius when he just mm -hmm. kind of puts his two arms out and just <laughs> kind of just sulks. So good. Yeah. It's even though it's his body. Okay. 
great question. Great, great question, mm -hmm. Patricia. Anybody else? <laughs> um, there was someone. Oh. Who, oh, sorry, Kofi. Uh, I think there was a previous person who said hi, and was we said we we're yeah. gonna get back to them. Yeah, 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 that was me. Hi, everyone. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a quick question regarding like careers in arts. Um, is it like a good idea to jump from one studio to another, or is it like best to just stay in one studio and just go on that your whole career? Hmm. Good question. Well, for Massey, it's good to just stay in one place. <laughs> I'll just say that. Um, yeah, I think it like depends. Yeah, it really depends. Depends if they value Definitely. you. You know, go to places yeah. that value you. That's what I mm -hmm. kind of always thought. If they stop so valuing go, me, then I'm going to go somewhere else. Yeah, also it goes to a, go to a place where you feel you're comfortable with. Like, if mm -hmm. you have certain things you love doing, but at one place you're not doing what you love to do, compared to another job, you're doing what you love. So that's that would be an easy option. Um, mm -hmm. But I think in general, like, in games, I think it tends to people tends to stay longer, um, because like you know, like at, it, it takes a lot of time and efforts for a studio to find an artist, and um, it it also takes time for an artist to get used to um, the project. So it's there's a time cost in there. If you're jumping around too much, and I don't think the studio will love that. Is because it's time and cost consuming. Um, but in animation, because it's project based, people tend to move around quite a lot. But I think it's still not, well, like, again, like you have to think about like if the project speaks to you, if it's a good fit. Um, I think, yeah, that's why we say it's all, it all depends. Yeah, I hired somebody because they said that they had a bad job for three years. And I was like, damn, you stayed there. That's really good. <laughs> you know, like that was one of the impetuses for hiring mm -hmm. that person. Also, they're great. Mm -hmm. um, I think another thing is uh, if you still have things to learn and you want to learn, like it's like stay i mean like even at the studio i feel like i mean i've been there for a while but i feel like i have still so much to learn um <clears throat> like, you know bobby k and even like the people around me and because it's a smaller studio it's easier for me to like um like directly go to uh people and kind of figure things out so i feel like when i stop learning i'm sorry bobby but <laughs> I it might be i understand <laughs> Some birds, their feathers are too colorful to be caged. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was from yeah. Shawshank Redemption. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But the, at, and also, for my part, my, my purpose is to recognize when Masay, you know, gets to that next level, right? And treat her as <laughs> such so that I you know, do her justice as well. It's a given <laughs> for sure. This is such yeah. a wonderful dynamic. I wish every like in higher relationship <laughs> would be like that, employee and employer, that would be great. It's also easier because, we, you know, we do have a smaller studio, you know, mm -hmm. so like we're able to do a lot of other things. Like, you know, Miss mm -hmm. A and I, we've traveled together in so many places and sometimes mm -hmm. it wasn't even for, like the workshop we went to we went to uh times square York. right to yeah. see the macy's day thanksgiving day parade or whatever um because we had a bunch of balloons in there you yeah know. our designs that was fun um i think uh the culture of a studio also makes a big difference whether you want to stay as well because mm. like if the culture is good then you know obviously it's like it attracts you more and because the culture is good it makes you want to learn more as well if i think um from what i hear it's like when like through my friends who work at the studios 
uh, when I hear their stories when, uh, about like the people there and how they're toxic and the boss doesn't really care about the people, it's like mm -hmm. you kind of just like, you know, have a wall that you start putting up and then that kind of like stops you from enjoying the work and also learning from the project or your coworkers and all that. So I think um, that's also like a factor as well. Yeah, like just being a good artist doesn't mean that you're going to be a good manager or a good studio owner or whatever. You know, it's like mm -hmm. we we always think about, OK, I need to get better at art. And my ultimate goal is to become art director or something like that. That used to be my kind of mm -hmm. uh, trajectory. Right. But then you realize, yeah, being an art director, you need a bunch of new skills. You need to learn a lot of soft skills of how, like, how to talk to people, how to, you know, um, promote good culture, things like that. How to yeah. read people when, because when you get in different positions, hey, I'm sorry, uh, things will change. Dynamics will change between you and whoever uh, because you're in a mm -hmm. different position now, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. Uh, and sometimes those positions, those people that uh, maybe that you are in charge of will not tell you everything because, you, you know, because you, you are it's, the person it's so in charge. different. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I that's something that I'm always trying to improve on and get better at, uh, you know, uh, I'm human, yeah. too. <laughs> so I try. I try my best yeah absolutely yeah yeah i feel like when like also i think it's important to think about like the reason why you wanted to change the job you know that opportunities comes up make sure you know where your goal is because mm -hmm. sometimes there are a lot of things coming up you feel like oh this is interesting i want to try this or other things oh that pays well i, I should go for that but knowing what you love to do um and knowing where you want it to be so you're not making um rational decisions and realize later oh this is not what i want and i have to change my job again because if you're jumping around too much that could be red flag for the next employer who wants to hire you it's like if you only stayed at place for a few few months and jump to another studio for a few months and then change again, it will be like, oh, what, are we, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. if you jump too much, that could definitely hurt your career in a way. So when you're making decisions, make sure you know where your goal is at. I think that, yeah. that that's important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so good. That's such good advice. It builds a pattern that you you're gonna start to build and then people are gonna think like is this gonna yeah. happen to us too <laughs> oh yeah that, oh yeah. yeah i look at that big time when i'm hiring people it's like this person changed jobs like how many times in two years geez all right mm -hmm. i guess i'm a, st mm -hmm. a stepping stone um that yeah. means to me that means like okay so i'm gonna spend my very precious time to train you for six months so that you can kind of do it okay for another six months and then get good at it in two months and then quit afterwards. It's like, no, I'm not hiring that person. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to start it all over again. Yeah. Anyhow, any, <laughs> any uh, last uh, question here for, for any of us, for Lynn or any of us? Hi, yeah, I, yeah, I'd love to ask something. Sure. Hi. Um, yeah, my question is that um, I'm sort of in an art world, I'd say. It's really honestly based around, like, because we're in this pandemic and we have to stay at home. Uh, so I just don't, I just don't really get inspired that often. And I used to have a really high drive for, and for motivation and stuff like that. But it's just, you know, it kind of disappeared because just, yeah, just the general uh situation so yeah my question is how would you go about getting out of an art rut based specifically around a uh inspiration and motivation let's do these 90 minute Where... workouts <laughs> yeah that's a good one <laughs> you don't have to yeah, think that is about pretty it. good 
takes nine. Yeah, years. I feel like I'm honestly doing yeah. it right now. Yeah, that's nice. good. <laughs> I think in a way we're all stuck at home,、um, so it's important for you to change、uh, the way you get inspired because the world is always changing. We have to adapt, thing, right? Yeah.、Um, I I was wondering, like, what was your method to get inspired before before the pandemic? What do you do? Um, before the pandemic, honestly, I I used to go out and draw, like, different stuff. Honestly, I used to go to cafes and just、mm-hmm. draw different people, draw different things. I guess just whatever I had in mind, whatever inspired me at that moment,、mm-hmm. and. My main drive was like the technicalities of things more than more so than the subject, I guess, and the basics and stuff like that. And、uh, for some reason, it just kind of disappeared. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that 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 could be challenging, especially like when we were used to be outside, like in a cafe. It's definitely a great atmosphere, like a、yeah. great environment to be in. I do miss that too. Um, I think right now, if you're at home, you know, try to get comfortable, have a sip of coffee, a sip, sip a cup of coffee at home, and then yeah, just like we said, like find some experiences online, you know, doing ninety、um, Mac challenge. You know, I think it's important to just keep doing it. Don't try,、um, just try to keep it up. Don't give it up.、Um, if 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 you stop making art, the 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 longer you're not drawing, I feel it's harder for you to get back.、Um, like I would do, you know, like find inspiration, find reference online to to draw from, and also if you wanted to paint la- landscape, I know you were doing doing characters,、um, but like I know a lot of people do plein air online, and it's a little group group of people,、mm-hmm. you know, they just. Go on Mac Crunch, which is the website that gives you a random spot. You could just see the street view, and you could just do a drawing out of、mm-hmm. that. I think it's there are so many ways to、um, to look for a reference online. I think that's the way we we kind of have to do it. Or maybe、yeah. if you have a balcony, just stay on the balcony, just observe the world out there. Be safe.、Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully, this will be all over soon. Where we could、mm-hmm. go back to to normal. Yeah.、Um, it. I think、uh, to add to this,、um, be, uh, just hearing that, like you know, you feel a bit more inspired and out of the rut when you go out to places like cafes and stuff.、Um, I, I kind of hear that, like maybe it's the 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 environment that you're setting yourself up in. To feel creative, so、um, like, do you have stuff that like around you where it's easy for you to like get to your sketchbook or get to like do studies and stuff? Like, I think、um, one thing for me that worked is like try to make it like put less resistance between you and the thing that you want to do. So for me, I want to do like some more like you know more watercolor, more traditional stuff. So I actually like set up my whole like art. Corner right here, so like I have no excuse to not like get my hands like you know all in the traditional stuff. So maybe it's like maybe it's a corner in a room where you can dedicate your like art stuff, or maybe it's like separating your computer away from your bed so that like、um, you can just get into that mindset. So I think、um, just like building an environment. That's catered towards you and your creativity is,、um, you know, it might make a big difference. That's such、yeah. good advice. That is. <laughs> that's so awesome, both of you. I remember Kofi. Was he on here for a second or something before, or was that somebody else? You thought that was me. Hey, Kofi. Am... <laughs> hey, hi you. How's everybody? And how's Lynn? Lynn. Hi. I'm a huge. I'm a huge fan of your work now. Uh, what、you. I was going—that's awesome. What I was going to say was basically a contribution, and it would take us all back to the conversation on style. And what I wanted to add to it was that、um, you can use this analogy to understand it better. Like a friend of mine said that when you are learning English, right, 
the fundamentals are like grammar, syntax, subject verb agreement, etc. But after you've learned all of that, you've learned your alphabet, everyone will have a different handwriting, even with the same fundamental. And I feel like it still applies with art as well. Like, I feel like naturally, we all already have a style. You don't need to have to try to be like an other art artist. You just have to kind of find those things that interest you and lean into those interests of yours. And your style will develop over time as you create a body of work. And that's just like the contribution I wanted to add. Thank you. Oh, that's yeah, so absolutely. good. Every time Kofi says anything, I'm like, I'm all ears. Uh, that's great. And, you know, it's like uh, when I think about my favorite artists, right? My favorite artists, generally, like if you delve in and you get to know them, you understand why it is they paint and draw the, the way that they do even more, mm -hmm. right? Because their style it represents them as people. It ref it's a reflection of them as people in many ways. You know, like uh, Peter Desev, his work is so effortless all the time. It looks like he barely tries, you know, um, and I'm sure he, I hope he does. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, if he doesn't, I wouldn't be surprised. And when you meet the guy, if you ever get to meet Peter, <laughs> he is kind of like that it feels kind of like it's effortless for him he's just the way he is mm -hmm. and he's just mm -hmm. like it's just cool it just you know and the style reflects that so it's it's really neat um i wonder if there's anybody else i can kind of think of that is like this you know where you see the style well hey my own thing if i want to get real psychological here why do I like to draw creatures? I've talked about this before, but after analyzing or whatever, um, it's because I think it's because I have an underbite, right? And as a child, I remember getting teased and you know getting in fights and things like that because people would tease me. And so then along comes, I remember like Super Mario Brothers, so weird right and these creatures that were kind of like mushroom creatures turtle creatures and all sorts of stuff and so weird mm -hmm. but it was done in an appealing way these two you know uh italian plumbers with these mustaches throwing stuff and it's like how is that appealing but it was so appealing and then everything that i've done since then i i feel like i always gravitate towards making things that generally would be kind of looked at as weird or ugly or whatever and presenting them in a nice appealing way because yeah. I'm that creature. Isn't that so like psychological? Like, because I, I feel think... like I'm that creature and I want to be presented like, Hey, I'm okay. That's so true. That's so true. I feel like, yeah, but like the style is just so unique because all of us are unique, right? Yeah. Like I, I do my corgis, but like what the corgi does in the image is actually what I wanted to do. Mm. You know, like years ago, <laughs> I had a corgi sitting in the tub, like just relaxing. I was actually traveling, working and freelance work. Um, time difference and I was doing personal work it was a lot I remember going back to my hotel I was like I just want to have a bath but instead of having a bath I actually sit down and draw a corgi having a bath <laughs> so I don't know so I think yeah your artwork speak, speaks to yourself uh, I think yeah. yeah that's how the style comes <laughs> it's it's like you're living through your paintings <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Again, well, like you know, I was like, staying up like two in the morning, and I did the German Shepherd with the like a bloody eyes. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's gorgeous, but with the, with our own experience, right? So yeah. I didn't say what we were saying. Oh, um, just quickly, I wanted to add uh, before we end the stream about like the 
artist like who you can think of i think kate is always the first person that comes to mind because just you know because i work with her and we share the same office room like just seeing her personality is like a total reflection of like her artwork is a reflection of her yeah, and oh even like even like just how she packages things like gifts and stuff how she's like so like careful and she picks out like you know she's very thoughtful of like what kind of texture and what color to add it to make it into this like very beautiful um like present wrapped gift i'm just like her her sensibility and even those kinds of things is like that's like she applies that to her own art so yeah like what we see on the screen it's just like it's like imagine that artwork yeah, on, a, on a simple like wrapped christmas present it's like <laughs> so intricate so like delicate she adds like little details even though she knows mm -hmm. that wrapper will be like you know saved by that person she still puts in that kind of effort so th like that's something i i i learn and i really want to apply to myself and <laughs> yeah i love all these so that's it's just gorgeous. like it's just it's just fun to see like how um her personality is just added into her art and that also that also kind of says something about like how you present yourself as a per person it's like how do you how do you want to see yourself in mm -hmm. your art and so just like as an artist and you know i want i want to be pleasant i want to like try to be more like careful uh and all that so yeah k k asadera is definitely the first person that came to mind and the person i was talking about before is this person right here peter desev where oh, so good. it feels effortless so everything he does it's just like it just feels so effortless like yeah. that looks like it took him three seconds and it's all there and it's so <laughs> so great it's ah like, so good so good it's so funny yeah so a few really great people to to follow this uh, stream um that we've shown I guess there's nothing else to do except for to say thank you. Thank you to everybody that tuned in today to spend some time with us, to ask some questions, to the people in the Discord. LBX Discord community is the best. Thank you so much for being awesome. And thank you to all the amazing mods for keeping the place so awesome and such a safe, wonderful, encouraging place. And to my co-host, Masei Seki. Thank you, Masei. Thank you to Jamie, my wonderful assistant that's always doing awesome. And the biggest thank you goes to our wonderful guest today, Lynn. Thank you so thank much, you. Lynn. It's Thanks been for having me. It's great. Wonderful. And we'll see you next time. Yeah, see you guys. Bye.